So now let's get into the area of capitalizing on opportunities. I think it's really important right here, as will be described in a few moments, that capitalizing on opportunities, not capitalizing on opportunity. All too often, we see advisors focused on getting a piece of a client's overall financial situation rather than positioning themselves and working through the process to be that trusted advisor. Jeff, this part of the process is absolutely critical to truly understanding the total aspect of the client's situation. Walk us through the steps. This is bringing it all together, Phil. This is really why we're there. And so as we think about the three tactics involved in, in capitalizing on opportunities, it's important to recognize that we need to have a system or a method to how we do it. And it begins with a very disciplined discovery model. The model's built not only around making sure we don't leave anything out, but it's also built around making sure that we ask questions that'll help the client think a little bit differently and help them think about things from a different angle, perhaps, than they thought about it in the past. Secondly, it involves understanding that we must do a very disciplined gap analysis, making sure that we understand how to leverage the team, the solutions to ultimately solve the problems. And finally, also it's important to recognize that as we present a solution, it must be clear, make sense, and discipline in such a manner that the client can follow and understand how a particular idea serves to accomplish their goal. David, tell us more about discovery. As Jeff says about discovery, the art and skill of asking questions and really being able to, whether it's life discovery, whether it's financial discovery, formulating and making a commitment back to the client and to their family that our commitment is to know their overall situation as best we can. And as Jeff just said, the client, not only us as advisors understanding them, but maybe the client understanding more about them and their situation current situation, their goals, what's in their future, their feelings and emotions, and their dynamics for their family and for their business. And really understanding how to do that and ask those questions. The formula, and whether it's fact-based questions, whether it's concern-based questions, tell me a little bit more, help me better understand, show me how, and then ultimately the consequence and the positive and the negative consequence types of questions that we as advisors might ask the art and the skill of asking the right questions so I, the advisor and the practitioner and the client can better understand their overall situation. Yeah, and if there's one skill set for an advisor, I would say this is the number one thing. The reason why this is so important is it goes through every section. We naturally think of this when we're, when we're selling a new opportunity that we see with somebody. But if you go all the way back through the blueprint, every piece of what we do requires elements of discovery, even in retain, where we're trying to figure out what the best service model is, not only for us, but for the client. We want to understand why that's important to them, what types of communication are important to them, what difference that makes in their lives. Secondly, in the expand area, obviously we're doing this instead of with a prospect, we're doing it with a client continually getting to know them better and better using those discovery cl skills. Clearly, when we're attracting new clients to our practice, we're going through that process. As we've discussed, it's really a two-way process. It's not just us finding out about them, it's them finding out about us. It's that sharing and making sure that there's a real match. It requires really intimate discovery questions to do that properly. And then, of course, in the sales process where we would naturally place those things. And, you know, you think about how really good questioning techniques sort of go through throughout the entire blueprint and I couldn't agree more more strongly but when you consider capitalizing on opportunities I go back to some of the things that we've said in the past what is it that a new prospect who's about to convert to a client is actually buying from us and ultimately it's relationship and you know you think about the relationships that our prospects have in other areas of their lives Husbands and wives don't listen to each other. Children don't listen to their parents. Um, if you have anything but the world's most marvelous boutique type doctor, then you're probably you know, in for 20 minutes no matter what your ailment is. If you as the advisor are the person who really crafts questions well and listens to those answers and repeat what you've heard, all techniques that you're going to be practicing yourself, when you master that skill, it's so much easier for that client to confidently move to you as an advisor. We know, I, I think in summation right here, it brings us back to uh, where we uh, began the journey uh, earlier in the conversation that you've got to have processes and disciplines in place. You've got to have great skill sets by which to apply that. And you've got to have the competency to really know the questions to ask. So as we accelerate into this fourth strategy of capitalizing on opportunities, we'll be focused on three things. Number one, a disciplined discovery process. 
Number two, a disciplined gap analysis process. And number three, a disciplined presentation process. Being intentional in your business makes all the difference in the world.